Well, I'm very pleased to uh, report that we have we have reached our our uh, goal, the donation goal, and we're ready to proceed. The uh, the editors are ready to go ahead and, and put that uh, video together, uh, the interview with Tom Dunley, the Gamel student, and uh, and I wanted to thank uh, getting us there, John, Linda, Tom, Mary, Carol, Rick. And uh, thank you so much. <laughs> and then also, uh, yeah, I, I, it really, I think you're going to be interested in it. And then uh, be sure if you want more information, uh, you know, you put it to us in the form of some sort of question when you do see it, so that we can actually uh, improve on that or even bring your questions to somebody else who may have been in the studio. I do mean to possibly interview one or two other people. You know, the, the contribution of Gamel is pretty serious uh, to the 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 um, the rebuilding of the um, of the great art the great representational art that we've enjoyed in the West for so long and in the East too for that matter and uh, so um, it's not it's it's not a bad thing to give a fair amount of information about him in fact um, that made me think of something I don't know what I've done with it now Let's see if it's here somewhere I just finished looking at this book oh here it is yeah. This book, uh, and I'm going to just go ahead and show it to you, but it's this book uh, by Al Banks. Alan was a student for, of Lax for some period of time. And I want to recommend this to you for further review. Uh, there are things about it that, in discussion, both Tom and I think are, we disagree with, but they're mostly the opinions. What he, what's really useful here is this is called An Artist's Daily Notes, recorded during the summer of 1976. Now, I just barely arrived at Gamble's, and I wasn't with those guys in the summer camp, in the summer studio uh, that year. But, um, but, but, but uh, Al Banks was visiting from the West, um, from, from, from wherever they're from, Minneapolis or wherever. And, um, and they were, uh, and he was uh, interviewing Gamble and, and, and taking a month or two's worth of uh, instruction from him. Uh, I know he's invited to come back by Gamel, and I guess he didn't get around to it until considerably later. He said close to the, Mr. Gamel's death. So, but uh, nevertheless, his notes parallel my thinking. What what Gamel said to me, the stuff that Gamel said to him is very similar. Um, a number of points are slightly different, but but with a, with a tiny bit of reservation, I really do recommend if you want to get an idea of what it was like to be in the Gamel studio and the sorts of things he talked about. That's a very nice thing to have. And, uh, Actually, let me see if I can give you more information. It's an Abbey Brook production. And uh, I guess that's all I can tell you. Uh, Alan R. Banks, inside the, inside the studio of RHI's Gamble. All right. Uh, yeah, and help him out. Who knows? Uh, he's a fellow artist. <laughs> uh, by his book. So I think it came out a year ago, maybe. Look, I'm having company. Look at that. Friendly little wasp there, my golly. Now, I also want to thank, uh, for our general production, uh, Julia and uh, Jerome, uh, for their nice contributions. And I, you know, a number of you have said that this means a lot to you, and, I, uh, and, and when you make contributions, uh, you know that you want it to continue. So I do appreciate those comments as well. So thank you very much. Today's conversation actually is uh, fascinating, and it's one of those that doesn't require pictures for a change. So I, and I, I've been so stuck doing, doing intensive workshops and stuff. I've been, I've been out of the picture practically for five weeks. It's amazing I've gotten anything done as far as videos go, but I haven't had time to really dedicate. So this is a nice one where I don't have to put time into actually creating a college course uh, with, with images for you. Uh, here's Roseanne talking. She says, years ago when I studied anatomy, the instructor kept uh, saying in in a critique that I ch that I changed my voice. It was a declaration that seemed to imply a negative judgment. I asked for more feedback, but never got a satisfying answer for a better understanding. I think it may have had something to, to do with mark making, brush strokes, but the question continues to linger on my mind to this day. Most of those older pieces are no longer available, so to go back and study them further to see if I can discern if change in voice is obvious to me now isn't feasible. 
your mention of the various kinds of brush strokes, strokes in a given painting stirred this up again and didn't seem negative. I hope we do never seem negative, by the way. Just whether or not it's true to nature or stylized. So I'm wondering if this might be worth further discussion in a future video or if it's even the correct term or if the instructor was uh, blowing smoke since the idea of voice in a painting seems far more complex than mark making. She's really getting close to the point there, isn't she? I'll ask that as a beginning student, I'll add that as a beginning student back then, it seems unlikely I had an artistic voice. I like her uh, humility in saying that. It seems unlikely I had an artistic voice. But uh, so it sounds like she also has an idea of what is meant by voice. Um, I mentioned before a story, um, and I'll start. And I'll just start with this. But I mentioned before that I used to like to write poetry, but I could never get a poem actually written, and it would be typically because I was trying to say something very important and that sort of thing. And um, so, what was my standard for that important thing? Right? It was. It was. Uh, you know, some great poem I'd heard somewhere, somewhere, or something like that. And, uh, and or it was some, you know, some great idea, you know, a subject line, a, you know, a ballad of a great subject, you know, um, or whatever it would have been. And recently, someone asked me to, um, or someone didn't ask me, someone, someone was struggling with English, and I took it upon myself to, to, to create a poem that had a sound basis, so this person could see how many words make the same sound. And so I wrote the poem with all these different words. I think it was the word, uh, uh, the letter, what was it? Um, I, oh, so it was, it was eins and tines and pickle pines was, <laughs> was the way the thing started out. So, uh, and uh, so but I went through there using all these different spellings and things that say the same, that spell the same way and all these different sounds uh, that are spelled similarly, uh, but for whatever that's worth. But what happened in the course of, the, of writing this thing, which I was just writing for the sound for this person, was I found that in the course of that, oh, I don't know, five or six stanza thing, I had, I had found a, something of value to say. I found something of value within myself came out. And so that's, to my mind, that's one way of saying, yeah, I found my voice, right? Now, now somebody else would say, well, you found, figured out how to make, make a poem. Why isn't that your voice? You know, the voices, you now have a rhyme scheme or something else. But the voice actually always means that thing, your voice, right? Doesn't it always imply the idea of your voice? One of the reasons I don't really recommend that people sit around copying sergeants and trying to be a sergeant is because that's actually a voice. That's actually a very particular voice. <laughs> Uh, and the kinds of things that give you your voice are your personal inspirations. It's your connection to reality. So when you're looking at nature, you're seeing beauties that other people aren't seeing. You're, you're, you're buying into or drawing forth something that's inspiring you. That's you. That's you. That's why so much of what I say is you've got to work from love because you've got to work from inspiration. And it's got to be a positive thing, not a negative one, right? So that's pretty significant that you, when you're thinking about this idea of your voice, uh, and and then and then think about it this other way, and that is you can't force your voice. You can't make up a voice. It's your authentic voice. I use the word authentic. It's kind of funny because I think of that movie Bagger Vance, and I would recommend you look at it with that in mind, by the way. And uh, but because he he uses that expression, you know, finding your authentic. I don't know if it's your authentic self or your authentic voice. And uh, I'm not. I'm not. In, in any particular way into Zen or anything like that, but the idea is a, is a human one, right? The idea of, um, of being yourself, not a new thing, right? So, um, yeah, so you don't go out there and paint somebody else's subjects. You don't go out there and paint the important subjects. And by the way, even if you're an illustrator and you're painting somebody else's subjects, it's gonna be your voice that comes through, right? It has to be what you're saying about the subject or your personal connection if you want it to have any kind of sort of integrity, you know, sort of hang togetherness, you know, and, uh, and, and, that, and, and the nuances of an evolution of, of a statement, you know, as you evolve uh, a particular picture, the nuances of it won't exist. They won't, they won't be unified unless you have that authentic voice, that authentic um, uh, um, 
sense of things, you know, that's yours, that's personal to you. So, and so it's a funny thing because we're sitting here saying, now look, we're just copying from nature. We're just copying, we're making as like as we can. But in fact, you're doing more than that because it's, that's the whole idea of it's coming through a personality. Remember, that's nature coming through a personality is the, is the way a painting is, a representational painting is described. So that personality is you, that's your, and, and, and your success on it, putting it on the canvas of getting the, the thing you love. What was it Degas said? Uh, <laughs> I'm cutting myself off here, I'll try to come back to that. But what Degas said, that's not your job um, to paint what you see, it's to, your job is to make others see what you saw. I did that very badly, that quote there. I was thinking about what I, how I didn't follow up the previous thought. <laughs> but if you follow me though, that we're talking about, um, now this is in that category of what you might call self-expression, right? So if you want to call self-expression as just saying crap on a canvas, that's, I guess that's a form of self-expression. But what we're talking about now before nature is, is the expression of a reaction, right? The expression of a sensation of the, of the innermost um, a quality that you're finding there, that you're responding with this positive thing to, right? So, um, yeah, and I suppose you could relate it to music. If I had a music person here sitting next to me, I would ask them that question. And by the way, these are just my reactions, my own sensations. I don't sit down here writing a bunch of things I'm going to tell you because I'm not that person. I'm just reacting with my own authentic, as it were, experience. Uh, but if you're speaking to a musician, I, I have heard, and I, for some period of time there, I tried to make myself sing a little bit. Right? I was raised in churches, and, and, um, and singing was a significant part of them, especially in this Lutheran church, which was part of a school I was attending as a kid. Where they would require you to sing the hymns, and man, these were great, amazing hymns of the uh, of the German, uh, uh, um, you know, the great German music, and uh, some of it was Beethoven and other stuff. And we were we were we had a really <laughs> a woman with really deep German roots, and she was really into this music and really wanted to get the quality out of it. But I'd, I'd never found that I could actually sing in a way where I could hear my voice. And so isn't that a similar kind of a thing, though? And, and I, I have heard that's true, that you've got to be able to sing, like, for example, loud enough, projecting and all those sorts of things. But it's, it's so you can hear the sound of your voice. And that's what you then wind up playing with, right? So, um, yeah, but this idea of style, style and voice, I mean... What you're saying and what's coming out of your reaction to stuff, it may be, it may lead to some stylistic things, but I suggest if it's, unless you're saying the same thing every time you go out, I would suggest that it probably won't lead to a predictable style in that sense. I think most style just comes out of the idea that you paint a certain way because you're more successful at it doing it this way than that way. And so you wind up with the thing that's more in the family of what I call style. But, uh, but it's not true that there's no way in the world that that, you, you know, like you're saying, the, the mark making of a certain kind of tonalist um, uh, may not be a significant factor in your, um, in your expression of what you're, the beauty of what you see. So, uh, yeah, so I would, wouldn't say more about that. Let's see if what else she was saying. So that was, she was talking about brush strokes and that sort of thing. Um, but I think we've covered it. Let me just see your mention of the various brush strokes. Yeah, okay. And... Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's my general conversation about it. And I hope that's of some value to you, Roseanne, and to anybody else. Uh, uh, it really, when I saw this thing, I thought, I'm not going to talk about that. And then I thought, of course, of course, it's, it's rich in all of us. So let's go ahead and, uh, and find our own voice. But you do it in the meditative experience, sitting before nature and just trying to draw forth what you see. I'd say first the truth of what you see, but you can't see truth anywhere nearly as well as, as through the beauty. As, uh, you know, what you're really doing is you're painting your response. You can't, I can't even stay in the room when I'm not responding to things. I don't even want to be there. I don't even like being a painter if I'm not, if I'm not in response mode. I've got to be in love, right? So when, it, when that's the case, you will find that specific thing to you, that thing you love, you know, is going to begin to give you your voice if you really care, if you really want to bring it you'll find what it takes to do that. And uh, so those are the general ramble, ramblings about voice. So um, yeah, and go look online or whatever and find out what people, other people say about voice. But 
mostly it is connected with the soulful man, you know, the soulful, soulful uh, uh, human. So good. And um, thank you, Roseanne, anyway. And thank you guys so much for those wonderful donations. Uh, and uh, we will have this to you. I'm hoping within two weeks have the um, interview ready for you. And uh, it has some outside shots and things. So it's being done in a way that I think you'll, you'll enjoy more and more as a presentation. And then um, I am definitely hoping we can try to do this again uh, into the future. So, all right. So be well, work well, uh, and, uh, and um, see you next time. Do, do share, comment, and subscribe as much as you can. And uh, always appreciated. All right. So hang in there next time.